Power Boat Television, North America's premier boating show. Time for My Boat. Many boaters rely on generators to power a wide range of AC systems. Now as the unit ages or fails and requires a rebuild, the owner should ask themselves some pretty tough questions. First, is the cost of the rebuild worth it? And second, if it's an older generator, like the one on this 1988 C-Ray, are parts still readily available? And finally, what are the benefits of upgrading to a newer system that runs cleaner and is more fuel efficient? Today on My Boat, we'll answer those questions and more. With the analysis done and the old generator in need of a full engine rebuild, it was time to get started. So we turned to our generator expert, Steve Dewanik of SMD Services. What we're going to do is remove the old generator first. So there are systems we have to disconnect, close off, stop fuel leaks, water leaks. So they're right now going to take apart the existing frame that had the sound shield system around it, which was a, a soft shield. They'll take that off. Then they'll disconnect from the water system, the exhaust system, close off everything. We'll disconnect from the fuel system, close off the fuel lines, don't want to have any leaks or whatever in there. They'll disconnect battery and electrical and take all that off of the genset. That makes the genset free enough. We can disconnect from the base. We'll probably have to put some shim blocks in plywood. We have to move it to the aft end. We'll have to have an overhead pick off of the lift, bring it up on an angle, swivel it through the hole, and remove it. With the generator on shore, we can get close enough to show you why a replacement was in order. Following a professional servicing, the diesel engine suffered complete failure traced to the installation of a fuel filter in place of an oil filter. Since this model is no longer in production and the cost of the rebuild high, the owner elected to install a new Northern Lights generator. The benefits for the upgrade include comparable cost, significantly improved fuel efficiency, reduced emissions, and quieter running. After Steve and his crew had checked the new unit, it was back aboard to start the installation with the base for the sound shield and generator. Holes to mount the base were drilled into the stringers, silicone applied to the stainless lag bolts, and the base was secured. With the base in, the new generator was swung out over the boat and lowered into the engine compartment, then manhandled into place. After drilling the mounting holes, the generator was lag bolted to the base, again using silicone sealant and stainless hardware. Next up, the sound shield frame uprights were assembled and mounted to the base, which required the removal of one of the main engine's Raycor filter sets to provide clearance. At this stage, the sound box end panels had to be installed since some of the hoses and wiring will pass through its ports. Then the upper frame assembly was installed. With the generator and frame in place, the project moved on to reinstalling subsystems and connecting services, starting with the generator's fuel filter. Back aft, the seawater hose from the strainer was connected using two stainless clamps while John remounted the main engine fuel filters. New exhaust hose was inserted through a port in the end panel and secured to the exhaust manifold. After being routed around the generator, the correct length was cut and the hose was connected to the muffler. New fuel delivery and return lines were measured and made up, with the delivery line connected to the Jenny's filter and the return from the Jenny to the fuel return manifold. Next, new heavy gauge starter battery cables had to be run, new ring connectors crimped on, shrink tubing sealed and connected. To ensure proper grounding, new bonding wires were connected from the Jenny's chassis to the boat's bonding system. While Sean and John continued below, Steve started work on the electrical and control hookups, first inspecting all AC supply wiring to ensure it was up to code and that the load on the panel was properly balanced. The plan was to use the existing control cable and tie the new control in by first mapping out the color scheme of the wiring. Using a zip saw, an opening was expanded in the panel and the wiring fed through the panel to ease the connection process. Following the color code notes, Steve stripped the wire, crimped on the connectors, staggering the connections to reduce the bundle diameter. Finally, heat shrink tubing was applied to neaten up the harness, then the control was mounted in the panel. At the same time, John was below at the generator preparing the control harness at that end. The same connection process was repeated, this time in a waterproof junction box to protect the connections from moisture. The last wiring task was to connect the AC output wiring to the electrical box on the generator. With all checks completed, it was time to start it up and test the generator without a load for voltage and frequency. The last stage of the install was to snap the panels of the sound box in place. With all fluid levels checked, the generator was restarted and a full load applied for final check. With the final testing underway, it was time to call it a day on another My Boat project.